It wasn't very long ago when we didn't need a dollar to survive. That, that word, those words right there came from Chief Trimble Gilbert not very long ago in a conference, and it, uh, it struck me. We have everything that we need on the land. Food sovereignty to me is being able to manage our own resources on the land. We know how to manage ourselves well, and, and we've proved it for thousands of years. For instance, the salmon in the Yukon River and the interior rivers used to, king salmon would run from June to October. A long time ago, there was eight pulses of king salmon. Uncles brought us out to teach us how to beaver trap, and they taught us how to read beaver houses by their size and their food feed pile in front on how many we could take. So uh, management is uh, started at a young age. From when you can learn how to talk and walk. Uh, I'll say one thing that I tell my nephews, uh, when you can wipe your own butt, you can go with me. <laughs> and that's when they start learning. <laughs> You go out to hunt geese, and you're able to share with elders and family members and cousins. It makes you feel so good. It's, there's no other better feeling being able to share. You're part of something. You're a provider. We're taught that when we're kids, and you get good luck. Sharing food is uh, how you get to a native person's heart. Uh, getting together and helping each other and loving each other is the the only way forward. The moose, they get skinny all winter, then he, the lakes thaw out and they start eating the vegetation again and get healthy. So we kind of do the same thing get spruce nuts and willow tips and things that are uh, popping in the spring. Have you ever been in the woods and seen the way a uh, spruce hen dances for his females? The cranes, the uh, spring dance, uh, mating dance is amazing too. You can see how uh, the people on, of the land have learned to mimic the animals and the birds. It's, it's amazing to see. So everybody's happy in the spring. I want to dance. <laughs> of course, the ice goes out, then we're back to putting the net in. Whitefish is a um, natural probiotic, and we start drying those and jarring them, and then we move on to king salmon. And that is one of the main staples of our diet along the river. That's our, our favorite, it's uh, the rich really good taste in fish. Then we move on to berry season, picking berries and fighting over spots. Papa. And then the moose season, yeah. if we get lucky enough to get a bear at the same time that's fat, we render that fat and we use the bear grease to eat with our dry meat, dried moose. We gather chaga, the wild tea. My elders like willow grouse because they eat willows and willows have natural aspirin in there. So it's good for your arthritis. When it's cold and dark and the days are short, you, if you stocked up good, then you're gonna live good through those months. Going on through the winter, people trap beaver occasionally. When we get a real fat lynx, we'll cut off the hind legs and we'll roast those for dinner. We all look forward to spring. The birds start to come back north. And we head out on our snow machines, our and some guys with dog teams still. We make blinds and we wait for them. And eventually they come and we shoot them and pluck them and it's tough work, but it's rewarding because uh, you get to eat that nice, fat, juicy goose in the end, whether you roast it or boil it up and make soup out of it. So that's kind of uh, our season of gathering. 
from moose to goose. <laughs> Everything that you eat out on the land, your traditional foods, is healthy for you in way many more ways than people realize. For instance, when I make a pot of moose bone soup, uh, many different memories come out of that one bone of times I spent with my grandma or my uncles that are gone now. It's, uh, it's healing. It brings me back to when I was a kid. In Rampart, when an elder needed a house, We'd go up river and we'd cut enough logs and one night, two guys cutting, two guys limbing, two guys peeling, and two guys would run out of the woods with a log to build a cabin. And no, nobody got paid. The young guys were learning how to build from the older guys. It was passing that tradition down, that knowledge down. That was the gift. Uh, it brings back memories. Or growing up there, my mom, made us garden. Uh, I ran the big potato garden. My sister ran the greenhouse. Uh, and it teaches you responsibility, making sure you get water up the bank, a couple hundred gallons at a time and let it settle. There's nothing like the outcome, getting a monster pile of potatoes and carrots and stuff and knowing where it came from and take pride in that. We used uh, root cellars Rampart's on the south side, so there's a lot of permafrost, so they actually dug holes into the side of the mountain to keep stuff cool in the summer. So you get to add that to your wild foods and stretch it and make it last longer. If you put away your garden food, it, it helps you to survive. Rampart, for a long time, has been influenced by gold miners. So that kind of changed Rampart's thought on food sovereignty. It became um, income. There was a trading post in Rampart, so people could trade fur for Western style things like uh, guns and uh, outboard motors and starches and sugar. It really changed our people's lifestyles and uh, their health. Nowadays, the lack of salmon coming up into the rivers of the world also is a, is a sign to me that we really need to start doing something else. Trawling and, and a huge bycatch. That's all for commercial and for greed. But in the last uh, 10 years, the climate change has really sped up. The winters are warmer, so the ice doesn't get as thick anymore the danger of falling through the river or the ice and drowning. We really risk our life nowadays to go and to get birds. Everybody in, a, in, a, in the state that we live in is connected by salmon one way or another, the whole state and the whole world. There's gotta be some kind of level where everything can operate smoothly. So there's, there's a way to make everybody happy. I'm sure there is a way. There's always been stories of elders talking about the problems that we're in now. They were coming. And my grandma did talk about it also. She said that I needed to teach my kids how to live off the land. She told me that when I was young because that's what we're gonna end up going back to. So gardening and self-sustaining and sovereignty is the predictions. So we're really proud uh, to start bringing the kids out, teaching them beaver trapping. Uh, the school started a dog mushing program this year. We're gonna have a winter camp for them to go to with the dogs to trap, and that'll continue on through the seasons. It makes good stewards of the land. Uh, just them having them learn how to manage their own area is important for the future of their survival and the future generations. <laughs> <laughs>